Okay, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our agricultural sector panel for the Workforce Windsor um, virtual events for promising sectors. Uh, my name is Safa Yunus. I am a research associate at Workforce Windsor Essex, and I'm excited to be facilitating uh, the session this morning. Uh, Workforce Windsor Essex is a community and development board whose mission is to lead regional employment and community planning for the development of a strong and sustainable workforce. To learn more about uh, what we do and how we can help you, please visit WorkforceWindsorEssex.com. And I'd like to acknowledge that while this event is virtual, uh, we would like to acknowledge the land on which we gather today as the traditional uh, territory of the Three Fires Confederacy uh, of First Nations comprised of the Ojibwe, the Odawa and the Potawatomi peoples. Uh, we are very grateful to work, learn and live in this area. Now to a few housekeeping items, uh, please feel free to use the chat feature located at the bottom of the window to engage with the session and the attendees and speakers. Uh, you may submit questions at any time throughout the session um, using the Q&A box located at the bottom of the display window. Uh, should you experience any technical difficulties, uh, please send a message in the chat box. So before we get into today's um, conversation, I'd also like to acknowledge that um, the agriculture sector is one of the key sectors in Windsor-Essex that is in high demand. Uh, the region boasts the largest concentration of greenhouses in North America, the longest growing season in the country on 176 farms and is strategically located close to the Canada-US border. This has meant that the sector has and will continue to, uh, to demand high numbers of employees with agri-food specific skill sets. So with that in mind, I'd like to welcome our speakers for today's event who will be able to speak more about what it is that what it is like to work um, in, in this in-demand sector. Um, with us today is Nathan Kuvalon, who is the marketing assistant at Ontario Greenhouse Vegetable Growers. We also have Dennis Vidmar, who is the founder and chairman at the Mushroom Hub. We have um, Sandeep Sindhu, who is the ERP manager at Nature Fresh Farms. And also with us today is Alvaro Fernandez, who is the COO, agronomist engineer, and control environment specialist, and also the co-founder of Orderly the Farms. Welcome everybody. Thank you. Yes, I'm very excited to be here today and to be hearing from everyone. Um, so I'm just going to start this off uh, fairly uh, simple, um, and it's up to whoever would like to go first. Um, I'd just like to hear about how you got started in your in your role in this sector and how it is that you are to where you are today. Like, how did you find yourself in this sector? Maybe we can start with um, Dennis. Hi guys, good morning. Thank you, uh, thank you for all uh, being here. Looking forward to the chat. Uh, I am a second generation mushroom farmer. I grew up on mushroom farms all my life uh, across a few continents. And uh, today I run an everything fungi company out of Windsor, Ontario. But we're now, I'm sitting right now in Detroit, Michigan, where we're opening up our second location of, of the mushroom hub. Uh, so I, yeah, <laughs> it's a, uh, for, for me, it's a, uh, for, for me, it's a very special thing to be within the industry that I'm at. And so uh, I see mushrooms as the solution to every problem man has. Thank you for sharing that with us, Dennis. Um, we can move on to Nathan. Nathan, how did you find yourself in this sector? Yeah, so hi everyone, happy to be here today. Um, so I grew up in Chatham, Ontario, a really egg focused community, but I just never really um, had any connections to the industry. So I didn't um see necessarily an overlap or a way that I fit into it um but during my school at University of Windsor I was lucky enough to get a qual placement with Ontario Greenhouse Vegetable Growers and honestly haven't looked back since um just yeah realized the opportunity and um passion I have for ag and yeah how uh, much opportunity there is available locally here awesome great Sandy, uh, how about yourself? How did you find yourself uh, in this sector? Um, good morning, everyone. Um, nice to meet all of you. I'm looking forward to share experiences and you know learn about your experiences here. Uh, so basically, I, I grew up in India. I did my bachelor's in electronics and communication engineering, and I came over to Canada for my computer engineering master's. 
uh, I never realized I would ever land up in agriculture because, you know, you never really see technology, engineering and agriculture go hand in hand. Uh, so I was, you know, just looking for opportunities, figuring out what I want to do. And then I saw this opportunity. Agriculture always hit close to my heart because that's what my, my forefathers did. And that's, my, that's what my father did back home. So I got this amazing opportunity by Nature Fresh Farms where, you know, I get to learn about the ERP software that we use in agriculture to store all the data. And, um, you know, I, and then I just, you know, I knew that this was my calling. So, and, you know, it was, it was a great opportunity because I had time to learn about the system and, you know, be a part of implementation of a new software to, you know, from, you know, from, from scratch. So um, that's how that's how I ended up in here, and uh, that's how I you know I grew to love my, my job, uh, which is basically a combination of technology and uh, and the farming here. Awesome, yeah. I mean, most people when they think of agriculture don't really think of the technological side of things. So I'm exactly. glad to have you uh, here to share that with us. Yeah. Um, and Alvaro, how did you find yourself in this sector? If you don't mind sharing with us. Yeah. So um, everything started, I think, with my family, definitely. They were always involved with field farming, which it's a lot different from what I do nowadays, which is a controlled environment agriculture. I think I got a little bit uh, uh, upset with always looking at the weather. So I, I really got into indoor farming. It was uh, definitely a lot more control into all the variables. But I think it all started definitely with exposure. Uh, my family exposed me a lot to agriculture. And I think overall, uh, while I was studying and, and getting deep into agriculture, I think uh, what I always thought about agriculture is it's, I think it's a noble profession. I don't think, uh, it doesn't matter what are you growing, what kind of food are you growing, if you're growing mushrooms, if you're growing plants. Uh, it's to me, it's, it's one of the most beautiful uh, professions and one of the things that we need the most as a civilization. So uh, I think that's where my heart uh, always took me. So that's why I, I decided to go really deep into agriculture and make from, from agriculture my, my life. So, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, what I'm hearing a lot is a lot of family connections and ties to sort of agriculture in, in sort of different ways, not necessarily in varying degrees also. I mean, I want to get back to that. Um, but the next question that I have um, is, what does a typical day look like for you? Um, and I know we have people in different um, roles here from the agricultural sector. So maybe I'd like to start off with um, uh, Nathan. What does a typical day look like for you in this sector? Yeah, so um, it's kind of hard to narrow it down to a typical day. But um, generally, so I'm in a marketing role here. So I would start off my day by kind of checking over my inbox and seeing if there's any anything that's come up over the over the night that I need to address in the morning um, as well as social media channels so that's a big responsibility here is um, monitoring and uh, having discourse with our uh, consumers on social media so just kind of checking if there's any messages that need responding there or anything that's come up um, after that I would kind of get to a task list or a calendar and see if there's anything urgent um, Generally, I have one, one or two meetings a day, um, whether internal or with external partners. Um, lately, been on Zoom, but uh, <laughs> hoping we can get some in-person stuff soon. Um, and then, yeah, there's um, other parts of my job, I guess, like content creation. So actually coming up with the posts that we make on social media and doing some of the creative work there, as well as um, some more, I guess, boring stuff like website maintenance and uh, updates there but yeah it kind of varies uh, from day to day but those are some of the general tasks that I would get up to right so not necessarily getting your hands dirty in the dirt with the growing but like the other side of things where you know you have to like speak with the customers and and maintain that side of things so thank you thank you for sharing that with us um Dennis what does a typical day look like for you um, it, it depends on it depends on which location I'm in. If I'm in Windsor, uh, usually between four and five a.m., I'm I'm meeting the meeting our grow room and and seeing everything that that pops up overnight. Um, we grow uh, six varieties of mushrooms in in Walkerville uh, for our fungi uh, line of foods. Uh, so 
from tendering to them to then selling it through our, through our store directly or delivering it, uh, or Talisa also carries our product out in, in Kingsville. Um, uh, that sort of, then you get into the production side of things, which is, you know, uh, figuring out the recipes, uh, what's required for what we're doing here in, in addition to what we're doing here in Detroit. So because I'm, I'm, building, I, I'm building something with, with multiple components, for my day, it's constantly jumping from, from, you know, from, from being in the grow room, which is the most beautiful thing ever. Like what, <laughs> what Alvaro was mentioning, you know, it, it, we truly are proud of being, you know, feeding people goodness. You know, there's so much uh, nutrition that comes out of locally grown food that not only are you good for the environment because, you know, you're steps away compared to it being shipped here from California or, or, or Florida or the rest of it, you know, knowing your farmer is now more crucial than ever, especially when gas is about to hit $2 a liter, I believe. Is that, is that what the case is? Here in, in the States, uh, I was, I mean, it, it went up by 50 cents for the last two days. Right, so when you're looking at that kind of component, well, it's great that you're supporting that local Zares or that Loblaws, but you know, but this is a whole different conversation, guys. But uh, in any case, so um, you got to love what you do. You know, you got to get out of bed and really love what you do. And then all of these things that you got to do throughout the day doesn't matter, right? Because you're enjoying every single step of the way. Like what Nathan was mentioning, he already he's got his own you know map out, and and it's it, what happened. And what it's what happens when you know we 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 love what we do. I kind of see that you know everybody here on the panel loves what they do, and that is that is our number one goal of how we succeed in every task that we do. So it doesn't matter what we throw at you, what throws at us, we we hopefully succeed or be better. Awesome. Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> um, that's great to hear. Yeah, from what I'm hearing so far is that there's it's multifaceted sort of, especially with you, Dennis, because you have expanded your business and are sort of doing other things with with the agriculture component of it. Um, so that's great. Um, Sandy, how about yourself? What does a typical day look like? I know that you mentioned um, your um, ERP manager. Um, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so um, typical day for me is basically I'm kind of, you know, I take care of the ERP software um, that we use in here. Um, so basically what happened is, you know, uh, you come in every day and then, you know, we have some daily job routines that should be running in ERP. So basically you come in and check all the job routines that are running smooth in the system, you know, they're because we, the nature, like nature fresh, it's 24 hour, um, the produce is 24 hour business because we have a sales company here. Um, need to deliver product to the customers. So it's a 24 hour production. So make sure, you know, all the, the, the routines are running properly. And then, you know, when users are using the system, there's obviously there are some issues here and there. So, you know, kind of uh, attend to those issues, troubleshoot any issues we're having in the software and making sure all the data entry is going into the system smoothly. So kind of, you know, being a gatekeeper of that and uh, any new users, we, um, we, train them to how to use the system, how to do the data entry. And uh, also for the stakeholders, we gather requirements because they, um, you know, being a sales company, they need to gather data from the system um, to make, a, you know, business decisions. So gather requirements, do the data analysis and deliver them all the reportings um, as per their requirements. Uh, and also another part is continuously researching different ways, different processes we can um, run our operations um, to improvise the system and to kind of you know, have it used so we can use it more efficiently. And uh, you know, meeting with software vendors to kind of keep ourselves up to date with the technology advancements and new features that are coming in market. So, you know, we're not, we're, we're, we're on top of our game when it comes to using technology for, you know, to uh, improve our businesses. And uh, being a being a project manager, uh, like being an ERP manager, you have uh, there are always like multiple projects going on. For example, being in agriculture, when you distribute uh, for the distribution, you you have your sales component, you have your freight component, and then you have your warehouse operations. So there are different softwares that comes along with the basic ERP, like you know transport management, warehouse management. So some of these projects are always on the go um, to. So project management is another um, is another aspect of my job that 
I have to it's kind of part of my daily daily routine um that that's pretty much it I guess um well I mean agriculture is a is a you know fast paced environment uh the with the production and the you know, you have to act fast. So you, we have to make sure we're keeping up with technology as well with that. Right, that's correct. Um, we do have a question from one of the um, audience members and I think it's towards Sandeep and it's, the question is, what does ERP stand for? Could you expand on that please? Yes, ERP is basically uh, enterprise resource planning. Um, it has different components. Uh, it is basically a software which has different modules like sales, finance, purchasing, uh, inventory, warehousing. So basically what it does is, you know, it's a software where, which is used by every different department of the company, sales company, where you enter your sales data, where you enter your purchase data, where you enter your inventory data. You know, it keeps a log of all the item item activity that's uh, happening in the in you know it it when it enters our system it enters our company and then when it leaves the company it keeps track of the you know whole full activity and then during that you know uh, it keeps um, you know you can do your finances and system as well um, you know how much you owe someone how much you know people uh, we are vendors or uh, sorry your customers owe you uh, so basically um, it's a software to keep track of your whole sales activity starting from purchase or starting from your own picking to um, including production as well. Production is a main component as well because, you know, being a sales company, you you just don't deliver the raw product. You put it into packaging as per customer's requirements. So all of this data is entered into the system and that helps you in analyzing your future demand. Uh, and so all of this is maintained in ERP software. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Alfaro, have we gotten to you about what, uh, what does a typical day look like for you? Yeah, so I would say my typical day, actually, it never starts on that day. It starts uh, days, weeks, or months before. Because I think when it comes to agriculture, I think one of the things that's very important for whoever is walking into it is that you're dealing with a biological factor. So things, they take time. And uh, if you make mistakes, if you don't plan ahead of time, you're going to be in deep trouble. And uh, I think that's basically how my day starts. It never, it never starts on that same day. It starts way, way before that. So uh, planning ahead of time, it's definitely one of the most important things. And I think that's how actually my day goes. So we're always thinking ahead of time and you always have to be predicting what's gonna happen next uh, because things, they don't happen necessarily in real time. So you're, you're always thinking ahead and, and that's basically how my whole day goes. And, and as Dan has mentioned, um, walking your crops, uh, it doesn't matter what position you are in uh, in the agriculture industry. It's, it's one of the most important things. You need to know your crop. You need to walk around. You know, uh, you, you need to understand what's going on there. And because agriculture involves so many variables, uh, again, another, another reason why you have to plan ahead. So uh, it requires basically most of the day uh, you're doing tasks that are required on that day, of course, you know, whatever the crop needs, the crop is it's number one. It uh, doesn't matter what you, what's happening in your life. Sometimes the plants come first because, you know, if conditions are not good for them, uh, you're in trouble. But again, after you take care of them, you just have to think, OK, so what's for tomorrow? What's for after tomorrow? What's for next week? What's, what's for next month? So planning. It's one of the biggest parts of, of my day, to be honest. Okay, so what I'm hearing from everyone so far is that uh, time management and sort of organizational skills are crucial for um, this, uh, for any role really in this sector. Um, I just wanted to pass off a question to really anybody who would like to answer. What other skills would you say are absolutely necessary for someone considering a role in agriculture? I, I think the most important, what, what Alvaro just mentioned there is you, you have to listen to what's growing and the environment consistently changes. And, you know, we, we use direct fresh, fresh air, for example. Um, and if it's too cold outside or too warm outside, the fungi react differently. And so if you don't pay attention to that, you then the fungi overgrows or over dries or, or other right so whatever 
whatever a, if you're a high school student and you don't know what you want to do with your life, in my opinion, you should go into mushrooms, but I'm the mushroom guy here. Um, and, you know, if, if you're looking to do that path, we'll, we'll be more than happy to, um, you know, uh, help out and, and potentially even have some, you know, volunteer uh, 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 positions we can create, right? We are doing some, uh, you know, we're doing regenerative farming. We're doing, we're doing testing on regenerating soil. We are testing all of our products for nutritional values. We are uh, utilizing research uh, to, to, to showcase um, how, what it means to expose mushrooms to the sun, you know, and how they gain additional vitamin D, you know, so all of these cool things that are happening in the mushroom industry, but if you want to, you know, help the planet, mushrooms, if you want to look at compostable packaging, mushrooms, if you want to clean up oil spills, mushrooms, if you want anti-aging cream, mushrooms, right? I mean, I don't know if I need to say more, but I can keep talking. <laughs> And I can talk for the next hour or two or three, because if you type in mushrooms in, you know, Google news, you will notice what's happening. Right. Okay. And so for me, it's mushrooms guys, but of course, yeah. every food chain is, every food chain is important. Uh, so if you guys are interested in mushrooms, you know, reach out to us and, and we'd love to uh, chat. Definitely. We see that you're very, very passionate about mushrooms and that's amazing because um, as you've mentioned, there are lots of benefits. Um, as there are with um, many of the other aspects of agriculture. Um, we see that Jennifer has joined us. So welcome, Jennifer. Um, Thank you, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, that's okay, that happens. Um, <laughs> um, I was just wondering maybe quickly uh, if you could just catch us up um, on what it is that you do and how you found yourself in this world before we sort of move on to some other questions we have in the chat. Sure, okay. Um, so my position is HR assistant. Um, I do everything from um, starting with recruiting, screening resumes, interviewing applicants, um, sending out offer of employments, doing orientations. Um, I also take care of all of our job advertisements. Um, so getting them posted uh, internally and externally, preparing advertisements. Um, I take care of our door card system. Um, so we do have um, a door card system in place where we, so that we don't have visitors popping in and wandering our workplace. So setting up new door cards and assisting current employees with issues. Uh, any employee assistance, um, assisting the rest of our HR personnel team um, and taking care of benefits and RSPs um, with their employees. And I've been in the role since 2015 um, and with Nature Fresh since 2020. So that's kind of what I do. Um, and sorry, what was the second question? Um, if you could just tell us about your like sort of educational world, how did you find yourself into it? Okay. Um, so I, I started off um, and I took HR in college. I was at St. Clair College and um, I was in the banking industry for seven years. Um, and I, after seven years, I just realized that it wasn't for me. I wasn't into selling credit products and it really wasn't the path that I wanted to take. So I decided to kind of leave that and see if I could get into HR. I mean, I wasn't very hopeful. I had graduated about 10 years before that. And I found an ad that said um, experience not necessary. So I gave it a shot and I kind of ended up um, in an HR role. Now I've been doing it since 2015. So I find myself very fortunate that I was able to get into the role when not having any experience. And it's just been great ever since then. I absolutely love it. Oh, it's great to hear that it's been fulfilling and that it's really, you didn't really expect to be in agriculture, but here you are <laughs> no. right through, yeah. through HR. Um, it is awesome. mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Jennifer. No problem. Um, a question for the group uh, from the chat is, what advice would you give to a high school student who may not have family history in agriculture? Because I find that many of our speakers here do have some sort of family history in agriculture, who, um, who is interested in getting into the industry. Um, I would love also, to answer that question. Sorry, just follow up. <laughs> Are there volunteer opportunities or entry level positions uh, for high school students? Go ahead, Alvaro. Yeah, I think I can answer both as well. So uh, I think in terms of opportunities, uh, there are tons of opportunities. I don't think that's the issue. I think it's just a matter as, you know, go after, just uh, do your research, look for something that you would like to start uh, with. You know, you can start with plants, you can start with mushrooms, you choose. Uh, I don't think that's the issue, to be very honest. I think the main issue that I would say, and or let's say the best recommendation I could give to students is uh, it's the attitude. You know, walk in with the right attitude, give 100% of what you have and 
learn. If you bring that into into whatever you whatever you're walking, uh, it's going to be successful. It's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for the company. You'll definitely have more opportunities later on. So I think it's it's more about the uh, the the uh, the attitude you're bringing in to the place, the workplace you're you're, you're coming in, uh, instead of opportunities. I think there are more than enough opportunities for all high high school students if they look for. Uh, especially here, as we just mentioned, this is the highest concentration of greenhouses in North America. So there, there's tons of that. So just about the attitude. And I don't think having an agricultural background in the family, it's necessary. I've seen professionals in the industry that had zero, like no background. The fam their families came from completely different backgrounds and they are amazing professionals. I don't think that is... Uh, there's like a, a barrier because I see that a lot of people say, I, I've, I've never been into agriculture. Uh, so, you know, my family has never been into that. So that, that's going to be a barrier for me. I don't think it is. It's more about you. And as Karina mentioned on the chat, it, it's more about, you know, the, the education you're getting, the attitude you're bringing to, to the workplace. Uh, it's more about you and not about uh, your family. It's, you know, it's, it's, you, you have to build yourself up in order to work whatever you want. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for that. Uh, does anybody else have anything else to add to, to that? Um, I, I think a perfect presentation of people who have dropped what they did and then go into farming is the farmer's market. And we're just upon that season. So in downtown Windsor, farmer's market is located on Palisher between Wyandotte and Park, right? And you can go there in the morning. Uh, I believe we start April 2nd all the farmers start you can meet up to 40 farmers so as the season progresses there'll be more and more farmers and then so if you but what you'll notice amongst you know 30 of them uh there's about half a dozen you know uh, uh that that just got into farming because they wanted to change the way their family was living they wanted more control over their food supply they like all these different factors so you know from accountants to to the rest of it so when people say it's not possible it is possible and, what, and to add to what Alvaro says, um, be open to failure. This is everything, you, you know, people tend to, like what Jennifer did, she dropped it and said, I'm going to take a shot. And she got a shot and here she is, right? So it really does take that. It takes the risk. But you have to also understand that in any part of agriculture, it's all aligned that it all has to efficiently work together in order to achieve the necessary goal for the benefit of the company. And so you may come into Nature Fresh's, you know, stacking skids. And then from stacking skids, you're going to start driving the forklift and loading the trucks. And then you're going to manage 50 of those trucks leaving in the next eight hours. And then you're going to go into the office role. Each of those roles is significant. And so be open to like all of the companies that you're going to join somewhere in Leamington or, or anywhere else in the region. Um, you're going to notice that if you're willing to learn, doors will open for you. And, and I think everybody in, in, in every company that we've dealt with, you know, we can see that progress and we appreciate it, right? So just, just, just come and be curious and have that positive attitude. Great. Yeah, that's, that's something definitely to keep in mind. Um, to, to the point of the question though, are, do any of your companies offer opportunities for volunteers for students to come in and maybe just who are a little bit curious about what it is like to work in the agricultural sector? Do does Artelisa Farms or the Mushroom Hub or Nature Fresh? Yes, do you guys we, offer? Yeah, we welcome students. I think uh, one of the most interesting things about working with students is that uh, you're 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 bringing someone in into this new world. And you're you're actually you have the opportunity to show them all the good things about agriculture, all the bad things about agriculture as well. But I, I think it's to me professionally as an agronomist engineer, I think it's it's one of the things that I like the most is actually teaching people, showing them the right way. And 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 again, it's we're always welcoming students. It's amazing for us. So awesome, awesome. Um. So I guess another question could be for everybody is what is something that has surprised you um, about working in the agricultural sector in, in Windsor, Essex? Um, has something like that, were you not expecting to happen, happen? Just really anything. Maybe we can start off with Jennifer. Sure. 
Um, the most surprising thing for me when I started here was the amount of opportunity and departments that there are. So we meet a lot of people that just think of agriculture as a greenhouse or maybe a warehouse facility, but the department, the departments are vary a lot. So we have things like procurement, IT, we have a kitchen staff on site. Um, there is human resources, health and safety, logistics, shipping, receiving, quality, finance, growing, marketing, food safety, compliance, purchasing, maintenance, and just the list goes on and on. And, you know, a lot of people are thinking, you know, uh, I need to go for human resources or health and safety. But if you're taking business administration, it can lead to so many different things. Um, it doesn't have to just be related to plants and growing. And then the second thing that I found really surprising was just how vital it is um, for all departments to be in communication with each other. So if one if one person doesn't say something about what they're doing or communicate with another person very effectively or very well, so many different departments are affected by by a little bit of miscommunication or lack of communication. It's just so intertwined. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that you mentioned all of you listed all of the different aspects to that come with agriculture, not just, you know, the hands on work that you have to do uh, either in the warehouse or in the field. Um, so thank you for that. Um, hopefully some, some people listening will, you know, pay attention and pick up on that. Nathan, how about yourself? Um, what, what's been the biggest surprise for you working in agriculture? Yeah, so again, um, just echoing the opportunity that's available. So it's a very um, forward industry, I guess, like right on the cutting edge of technology. Um, just on the marketing sense of things, we get to work with things like uh, developing VR experiences and uh, the impacts of augmented reality. It's just, yeah, I never underestimate the opportunity for overlap with your interests or your studies um, in ag. And then I guess um, just being more marketing focused, um, one thing that surprised me was just how large scale some of our um, efforts can be. So like in my time with OGBG, I've got to work with uh, national media publications, uh, some big magazines, and even get um, social media content with an Olympian who participated at the Summer Olympics there. Like just uh, stuff that I didn't necessarily see happening locally. Uh, it's really exciting. Yeah, that Olympian part definitely is a surprise. I would not expect that. Um, how about you, Sandy? Uh, anything uh, surprising that jumped out at you? Um, I think uh, getting my job itself was a surprise to me because, you know, as I mentioned, like, you know, I was hoping to get into some, you know, like a tech company, maybe into some, you know, software company. But, you know, it was a surprise to me that, you know, to kind of when I got into the industry, I realized, you know, uh, I agree with Jennifer, like how wide you know, range of opportunities you can get within the agriculture sector. So, you know, uh, this, this thing, the thing is, you know, if you're interested, it doesn't matter, like you, you know, if you're interested, if you're doubtful about your interest in agriculture, and then you have your interest in, I don't know, maybe sales, marketing, uh, you know, your, yeah, your, your IT department itself, I mean, you can find the best of both worlds. So I think that's that's surprising, you know, how wide range, you know, when you think of agriculture, you know, comes to your mind is farming, picking, packing. But, you know, when you get into it, you realize, you know, there's there's a wide variety. There's warehouse management, sales, there's quality, um, you know, marketing, finance, IT, everything. You know, it's it's all like a big team. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, every department is is an essential department, uh, you know, is essential in itself. It's like, you know, it's like a one big family. You cannot, you know, you need to have all the tiers. You know, it's it's how all interconnected, it's uh, important to be interconnected uh, within the company. So I think it's surprising, you know, how with the technology, with the with the modernization, uh, with the, you know, advancements in technology, it, it is increasing a lot of opportunities. And then there's scope for even more, you know, you, you can, you know, be, you can be creative, um, you know, you can have different, you know, uh, carve out different processes, different where operational processes on how you operate stuff, you know, you can come up with a lot of ideas that you can imagine, you know, to operate your, your, you know, your op uh, warehouse activities that, you know, to kind of improvise your, 
your you know business efficiency there so it is surprising um you know a lot of the, of the amount of opportunities that we have and uh, within the within the agriculture industry right that's it's awesome just, <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's just, it's, it's just more than we say agriculture, right? It's just more than that. Right, which is what we were hoping to showcase today with um, all the speakers in today, that it is more just than just, even if that's what you're into, picking and packing and all that, there is yeah. so much more that uh, happens in the agricultural sector than just that. And it's important to have everybody aware of that when making career choices. Um, Alvaro or Dennis, do you have anything that sort of stuck out to you that surprised you when you uh, joined the agricultural sector? Yeah, I do. Uh, actually, I think one of the things that really, um, it surprised me every time, I would say, it's the uh, uh, huge disconnection that there is between uh, consumers and, and agriculture. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, of course. I don't think we have to get into that. But I think that's one of the things that, that always surprises me and one of, the, one of the reasons we decided to create Hortaliza, it's actually to be a bridge and reconnect people with agriculture, bring agriculture closer uh, to people. Uh, because every time I speak to someone and, and I realize how, how big that disconnection is, uh, I, I think that really empowers what, what we're doing, for example, at Hortaliza. And uh, you know, it, it's just creating that bridge and reconnecting people with agriculture. And I think in addition to that, also for whoever is uh, planning on, on getting and working in the, in the field, I think one of the things that I, I've seen the most is it is hard work. I don't think we, we should, uh, you know, uh, put a curtain on that because it is hard work working in, in greenhouses and indoor farms, mushroom farms. There's a lot of work involved. Um, it, it's, it's very demanding on, on, on people but it's also very rewarding. But I realize that uh, the newer generations, uh, I, I think usually they, you know, sometimes, uh, which is personal, you know, some people, they prefer to go uh, in, in, in one direction that it's, you know, it's going to be less uh, physical input or, or less hours uh, devoted to something. But as I mentioned before, I think agriculture is so rewarding. You, you need to give it time in order to get that reward. It's about patience. And now I know they, I understand that we live in a society right now where, you know, we're always swiping up and down and, and things are, are always fast. So taking the time to see a plant grow, uh, I think that's one of the most rewarding things for whoever works in agriculture. Seeing something that, you know, just looking at that seed and months later, just looking at what you did, you know, all the hard work you put into and that became food, which is, I said before, it's something so to me, it's very noble. It's one of the most beautiful things. Uh, you know, again, uh, to become interested in agriculture, give it time. You know, it, you're not going to find out if you like uh, to be in the agricultural field in one week. It's going to take some time. Uh, see your results first. You know, you can even start in your own garden with agriculture, but you have to see your own results. You have to harvest that, even if it's for a company or for yourself. You, you need to harvest that to understand if you really like it or not. So again, it's about building that bridge and that, you know, just recovering that huge disconnection we have with agriculture nowadays. I see, yeah. Um, Dennis, you were nodding your head a lot, I think in agreement. <laughs> Do you have totally. any comments to that? Totally, I mean, Avar and I speak, uh, you know, when we speak, we speak, and then, you know, that turns into conversations of, uh, minutes and hours because it's easy to talk about you know all the things that we're dealing with because it's a uh, you know a lot of students don't understand that we're so willing to teach and we're there we're there to be asked the questions and you know I always when 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 someone joins my team I always tell them first rule of the game is we have to find a home for fungi and we have to protect that fungi. And so everything that we do on a day-to-day -day basis is how do we protect that fungi, right? And so, and that goes with everything that Alvaro was mentioning. You know, you've got to tender it. You've got to fall in love with it. You've got to, you got to under, you, you have to breathe with it, right? Because in the end, guys, we're talking about agriculture here, but what I'm asking you to do, please, over the next one, two, three, some, somebody's going to take a year, two, three, somebody's going to take 10, but keep searching until you get goosebumps. 
And when you jump out of bed in the morning without that clock ringing in your ear, because that, that whatever drives you will pull you. And when it pulls you, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's the feeling that you want to live. And so um, for every, each and every one of you there's out there, again, there may be 20 of you listening right now or watching us, all 20 of you could come together and form a company and buy three acres of land and start tilling the land in a month. And voila, you got a business, right? There's so much opportunity out there and all you have to be going, I'm gonna go back to what Alvar said, attitude. How you formulate that attitude is how you're going to direct on where you're going and how are you gonna end up. So we're here, we're, li- you know, we're willing to teach, contact us and you know, let's see what happens in the future. Right. Thank you guys. <laughs> so I'm really picking up on all of this passion um, about you know being with the earth and being with um, with what you're growing. I don't know, Dennis. I might just go and, and purchase that plot of land. <laughs> you convinced me. <laughs> um, so I think that uh, think that could lead really well into uh, our next question from the audience, which is, what is your favorite part of the job? I feel like we've been talking about it a lot um, with uh, Alvaro and Dennis. Um, maybe uh, Nathan, if you could just tell us what your favorite part of uh, working in this sector is. Yeah, um, honestly, I think my personally, my favorite part would be the creative freedom that I get um, in our marketing department. So I get to kind of yeah, just drive our programs um, how I'd like. So I don't know, it's just really rewarding to get to see um, projects come to fruition. And um, I don't know, yeah, <laughs> it's creative freedom awesome. for me. Great, how about you, Jennifer? Um, I really love to help people. Um, that is one thing that I enjoyed at the bank was the customer service aspect. So I knew that HR was um, gonna take me along a similar path. And that is what I enjoy most. I have people asking me questions all day long, people ask me for assistance with things. And um, so for me, it's it's all about the customer service. So the employees are my customer, the managers and supervisors that I work with, they are my customer um, in, in a way, right? I'm helping them with whatever they need. And, and that's what I take pride in. So if someone asks me for help with something and I'm able to help them um, and show them kindness throughout that step, um, that's what makes my day is just being there for them. That's great. That's awesome. Um, Sandeep, what about you? What's your favorite part of uh, your job? Uh, Favorite part of my job is being able to, um, you know, go to every department and communicate with them. Um, I mean, I I love talking to people and uh, love solving their problems when they get any. Not that I want them to get problems, but, you know, I love helping them with any issues they're having. But, uh, you know, it's amazing. It's kind of perks that you have. You know, you get to walk into the warehouse, you see you know, see, see all the product movement, uh, you know, how smoothly it enters your building and then it goes into production. And then, you know, you, know, you get to, you get to, you know, go to every department and see how they're, you know, how the workflow is. And uh, I think I really, I really love, uh, I really love seeing all that, you know, workflow through the warehouse and, uh, you know, being able to connect to every department to see if I can help them, you know, in any way to make their lives easier in their jobs and, uh, you know, um, just kind of help them throughout it. And then always, always turn on research and uh, see, you know, how can we make you know everyone's jobs easier than what they're doing right now um i think that aspect is is what i love um, about my job there awesome so what i'm hearing again is um so creative creative freedom um the ability to be able to help people and um problem solving and i think it's very clear from alvaro and dennis that they're very passionate about what they do and um, I'm sure they could tell us their favorite, uh, their best part about their job. It's just that we're running a little bit low on time here. Um, so uh, I only have about two more questions. So if we could just keep that time um, constraint in mind. One question is uh, from the chat and it's, what new innovations do you see coming up in the industry? I know that Nathan had mentioned that this industry is on the cutting edge of technology. So I was wondering if um, anyone could sort of speak to that really quickly about what, um, what new innovations are coming up in this industry. Um, actually, uh, I, I agree with, uh, with Nathan, uh, technology, I think we're living right now, uh, in a moment, uh, where technology is part of, our, it's part of our lives and it is a huge addition to agriculture. 
uh, and it helps agriculture to do things that were impossible even five, 10 years ago. So I, I think to me, that's the most exciting moment in, in agriculture. Uh, it's, it's being able to use uh, amazing technology and implementing that into, you know, integrating that with biology. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful combination to me and it allows us to be more efficient, you know, to, to be more sustainable. It's, it, it has endless uh, positive things to, to number. So I think it's, it's one of the most exciting moments in, in, in agriculture right now because of technology and it's gonna get just better, so. Great. Does anybody else have any comments to add to that? I think technology um, has a has a great part, especially in these days today. You know uh, when yeah. so what happened? You know in in the greenhouse, you see new technologies coming. You know there there are new ways of packing, which you know actually you know makes you more labor efficient. Uh, you know there there are new ways of you know uh, putting stuff in packs, and there there are new machinery every day that's coming in in warehouse that you see you know you, you get amazed like wow you know so um I, and besides that the you know the research and development uh, area you know is getting very benefited by the technology as well and when i talk about uh, you know technology there are some softwares which helps you for example erp software you gather data and then you know you analyze data that helps you in a in an immersed way that we immense way where you can you know see What's your future demand? So it makes your business more efficient. And also, you know, we, we have a tasting panel here uh, within our company where, you know, all the different users, you know, we have software to grab data from their feedback on different, you know, new varieties that they're developing. And, uh, you know, it's it, using all these software tools that we available these days to analyze those feedback and see, you know, how, how can you come up with a, with a better variety to serve your customers. Um, I think uh, I think in every little department, technology has affected uh, whether it's you know whether it's a packing process or you know you're analyzing how your what what your crops gonna how your crops gonna be uh, in, in you know in future. I think it's affected in in every different depart department in agriculture. Right, and that is very exciting to hear. Um, just the final question that I have for um, the audience members, and I think a great way to close off this uh, discussion is what advice do you have for someone considering a career in agriculture? So many of the attendees of this uh, discussion are sort of in high school and uh, sort of considering next steps for their careers, or they could be um, adult job seekers who um, haven't really considered agriculture before. What advice would you give to them? Um, uh, Dennis, we can start with you if you'd like. I think, you know, um, I'll go back to attitude, what Alvar said. Attitude, curiosity, patience, also Alvar said, you know, um, it, you, you got to be willing. That's it. You know, if our, our time is valuable because we devote our time to the food that we grow. And we want to make sure that, 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 that our specimens are taken care of. And so when you're coming aboard, we're expecting you to understand how much we care. Because every time that you come unprepared for that matter, you know, uh, it, it, we're, we're, we're willing to teach. And so anybody that's, you know, I always try to, my, my mantra of the day is always try to see the positive things. So how can we positively react? And that's all we can do is teach. And we're hoping that with your teaching, with our teaching, curiosity, curiosity will develop even more in any sector. Right, you may you may love electronics, well, uh, uh, technology, building robots because the future is going that way, right? Well, Alvaro is you know using technology, Nature Press is using technology, we're using technology, right? I can right now on my phone see what my humidity is, what my you know temperature is, what my airflow is. Those are the key points, you know, of 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 all of our operations, but there's so many other, which when Sandeep has, has, I mean, she really dived into that one. So, so, I mean, you can tell how technical you can get. So agriculture is beautiful. It's just, do you want to get your hands dirty or do you want to get your mind dirty? You know, either which way you go, you're expanding, you're growing, which is a beautiful thing, mm -hmm. right? So be curious, be wanting, we're here. And yeah, reach out. If you're interested in mushrooms, the mushroom, we're at 879 Walker Road. Uh, go to the mushroom.com. 
uh, we, we are posting some careers now for our Detroit store, but we'll be posting careers now shortly for the Windsor store as well. So thanks guys. Awesome, that's something definitely to keep in mind for those watching. Um, uh, how about you, Nathan? Uh, any advice you would give to somebody considering? Yeah, um, the biggest thing, and I think we've touched on it a bunch, but just don't be afraid to dive in and immerse yourself in the world of ag. Um, there's, like we've talked about today, there's a lot of opportunities out there. And until you truly put yourself out there and get into it, you don't really know if it's for you. Um, just from my experience, like I mentioned earlier, I never would have seen myself in the role that I am today, but because of my co-op opportunity, I love it. And, um, I think there's a lot of people locally like that, um, that might not see the computer science could have a spot in the egg, uh, but as things progress, yeah, it's really important to just take that step and uh, see if it's for you, yeah. Awesome, does anybody else have any other pieces of advice that they'd like to share? I do, um, so I, I think that it's it's really important for students to, to know that this uh, agriculture is year round. Um, so there's a lot of stability, whereas if you are looking at something automotive related um, or something that is more seasonal or where there's layoffs, that's the nice part about agriculture is you are going to have work year round. I don't know if all produce is the same, but definitely for uh, veg uh, our vegetables. Um, so that's really nice. You're not left searching for work or sitting on unemployment at, you know, part of your, your wage. So shortage of work is very rare. It is a clean environment, unless you're looking for something specifically in the greenhouse, um, it, it, it's very clean. So uh, I don't go into the greenhouse myself very often, um, but I think a lot of people are worried that it might be dirty or smelly, and that's just not the case. There's a lot of opportunities that are, that are very clean. Um, opportunity to grow is very big um, and just don't fall for the stereotype of a farm. You're, you're, I mean, for our farm anyway, we don't have, you know, the tractors, we're not out um, with shovels or anything like that. You're not outside, you're still in the elements as it can get very warm in the greenhouse. But if you do have a job in, in an office, you're in finance or you're in marketing, or you're in human resources or health and safety, you're fairly comfortable. So don't be afraid of what the hard work is. The hard work is more so um, just the time you put into it, the passion that you're developing, your actual work. Um, I'm sure the other guys, can, theirs might vary a little bit, but the hard work isn't um, what you would think of when you typically think of a farm, for, for me anyway. I don't know if it's the same for everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, any, anyone else? Just a few, just a few last words. Uh, I think my, what I would say is um, try to find balance between education, getting educated in the field, and working in the field. Uh, I think sometimes we get lost in education, and we forget that working in the field is very important. So, or sometimes we get too deep into working in the field and we forget education. You need to find balance between both because they are they work very well together. Uh, if you if you start uh, getting unbalanced uh, on that scale, it's when things uh, start going wrong. Uh, so try to find balance between education and experience. Having those perfectly balanced, not of course perfectly balanced, I think it's one of the best advices. I would give it to myself if I, if I had to go back in time, uh, I will look more balance between education and, and experience. Great, great advice. Wonderful, thank you so much Alvaro for sharing that. Um, Sandy, did you have anything else to say? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I think I can, we can add one more point, especially in the COVID times, uh, you know, agriculture is an important source of livelihood for people. And then COVID times made us realize how, you know, uh, how lucky you are if you're working in an essential department, in this essential industry, right? That kind of, that's kind of one another, uh, you know, uh, kind of perk of working in a, like Jennifer already mentioned that, you know, you know, in their industries, which, you know, you have a, you have a fear where you might get laid off. Uh, so I think it's, uh, it's great to work for essential, uh, essential industry when, you know, like 
you have so many opportunities you know it's just not you you have to be uh, you know live working at the farm or picking or you know if you're not interested in that there there's so many other opportunities that you know you should look at grabbing and like Elvira said you know obviously you have to be passionate about you know what you want to do and then you know in order to make that work education is really important and then you just you know take time to find your passion and then you know, get a combination of agriculture in that department. And I'm sure that's, that's, I'm sure that's, you know, possible. That's great. So. Awesome. So for those of you who are either watching live or watching the recording, I hope that you've sort of picked up the, the key, um, the key points of today's discussion, which is that there is stability in this industry. It is a high demand industry in the, in the region. Um, if you come at it with the right attitude as Alvaro and Dennis and many of the other speakers have said, there is room for you to learn and to grow in this industry. Um, and there's many opportunities. So I'd just like to thank everybody, uh, all of you for your time, uh, for joining us today and to share your experiences. Um, for those of you who'd like to learn more about um, the agricultural sector, you can read more at workforcewindsoressex.com slash career dash library. Um, we do have a quick survey for all of you in attendance today. Um, as soon as you click out, it should pop up for you. It's only two questions. We would really appreciate it if you responded to those. Uh, please don't forget to check back uh, at our post uh, at our past speaker events highlighting careers in healthcare, transportation, entrepreneurship, and manufacturing at workforcewindsoressex.com slash virtual dash learning dash events. Uh, thank you again so much for all of you who have uh, spent your time with us today um, and shared your experiences. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.